Story number six, the greedy Gehazi. Naam was so happy and thankful that he had been cured of his leprosy that he wanted to give Elijah all the gold, silver, and beautiful garments he had brought with him. But Elijah wanted no payment for something God had done. He hoped that this famous general would go back to his king and country and tell how the God of Israel, unlike the gods of the heathen, is willing to help the needy of all nations free of charge, without money and without price. As the Lord liveth, before whom I stand, he said to Naam, I will receive none. Naam urged him, but he again refused. Aglow with the memory of this wonderful generosity, Naam started back for Damascus. No doubt he had to his servants. He said to his servants, I never saw anything like this in all my life. Imagine any man refusing all that money I offered him. The God he serves must be different from any I have ever heard about. So the happy party moved nor northward, everyone in it eager to get home and tell all they had seen and heard in Israel. Then something made Naam look back. A man was running after them. From a distance he looked like Gehazi, Elijah's servant. What could he want? Naam reined in his horses and everybody else did the same. Gehazi came up panting. Naam got out of his chariot to greet him. Is all well? he asked, a little worried. Oh, yes, said Gehazi cheerfully, while he made up the biggest lie of his life. All is well. My master hath sent me, saying, Behold, even now there be come to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garments. The story sounded perfectly plausible, and Naam was most happy to oblige. Take two talents, he said, and he urged them, and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of raiment, and laid them upon two of his servants, and they bare them before him. Naam started up his horses again and departed, wondering whether Gehazi's story was true or whether Elijah really wanted the money for himself after all. Meanwhile, Gehazi returned and hid his loot in a secret place. But if he thought he was gonna, he was going to keep anything like this secret, he just didn't know his master. Where have you been? Asked Elijah as he entered the house again. Nowhere, nowhere! Exclaimed the prophet in great anger. Went not my heart with thee, with the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee? Gehazi looked at the floor ashamed. He had been found out. His awful lies were known. But Elijah was not finished with him yet. Is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and maid servants? He asked sternly. It was not. Said, and Gehazi, as a servant of God's prophet, shouldn't have should have known it. Then came his punishment. The leprosy, therefore, of Naam shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. God's awful judgment on greedy Gehazi was immediately seen and went out from his presence a leopard as white as snow. Was the punishment too great? Not for his sin. For by his greed, selfishness, and falsehood, Gehazi had spoiled something very beautiful God had tried to do for the whole kingdom of Syria and all the world beyond. Blessed be the name of the Most High God.